everybody. Welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, today I'm working with the Tabasco peppers. These are such fantastic peppers. I only grow them maybe once every three years or so because a little goes a long, long way. So last video, Kevin talked with you about these Tabasco peppers just briefly and said that this year I'm gonna be making more Tabasco sauce. And would y'all like to watch and find out how I make it? And overwhelmingly, you all said, yes, you'd like to come along in the process of making Tabasco sauce. So today I'm starting that process. I'm actually just gonna be harvesting some today because it's a beautiful day, it is hot. Um, I have other things to do today as well, but tomorrow it's gonna be rainy and it will be a perfect day to be in the kitchen making some Tabasco sauce. The other thing is there is a special super spicy vinegar that a lot of you like. I think it's called like Louisiana pepper sauce or something like that. And it uses these yellow Tabasco peppers versus the red Tabasco peppers. So we're also gonna be making that in this video. So I hope you stick around for both of them. Now there are two ways to make Tabasco sauce, not fermented and fermented. And I'm gonna take you through the process of both in this video. So you essentially get three videos in one today. It's your special day. But right now we need to get started harvesting these peppers. I just wanna show you how gorgeous they are. I give you some tips about how to be careful when you're picking these because they're super, super, super spicy. Now, before we get started harvesting, let's just take a moment to admire how beautiful these Tabasco peppers are and how gorgeous the plants are. These are almost like Christmas trees with Christmas lights on them. And look at all these different colors. They start off, they actually really start off green and then they turn this yellow color and then they turn this orange color and then a little bit darker red. And then when they're completely ripe, they're this dark red. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my gosh. Now, when you're harvesting these, please take some safety precautions. Bring out some gloves or some, some work gloves or something because there is a good chance when you pop these off of here, they're gonna separate from the stems. And then a little tiny piece of the pepper juice is gonna come out and oh my gosh, you guys, it's so spicy. You don't wanna get that on your skin and rub it in your eyes or you know, rub your mouth or something. So let's put on some gloves so that we can be safe. I like to just use these kind of kitchen gloves to do this because I can still feel what I'm doing versus um, garden gloves or work gloves that you just don't have a whole lot of teeny tiny dexterity. Okay, so let's start picking some of these. Now for the Tabasco sauce that we're gonna be making, we want the peppers that are 100% red, like are the reddest of the red on the plants because they are the most ripe and they're gonna make a beautiful color Tabasco sauce. And so that's what we're looking for. So when you're, when you're harvesting these red ones that are ripe, they will just pop right off their little bitty stem right there. Let me see if I can show you that. Watch that, watch. Boop, just like that. That's how you're gonna harvest those. That way there's a lot less work in the kitchen to make the Tabasco sauce. You don't have to take these off in the kitchen, just take them off right on the branch. Now see when I took that off of there, it peeled a little way, it peeled away a little bit. And that is why you are wearing gloves because that stuff is hot in there, okay? All right, so wear your gloves. We're gonna take a bunch of these as many as we can that are super ripe. And maybe a couple that are just aren't quite ripe, but we're gonna try to get just the ripe ones. Now, the one thing that I have to say about uh, these Tabasco peppers is that they take a long time to grow and they take a long time to mature. Uh, so I'm really glad that we have a, a really long growing season. And if you don't really have a long growing season, and you want to try Tabasco peppers, I very much suggest that you start your seeds early indoors so that they're pretty big when you're planting them in the ground. And that way you are increasing the chance and the likelihood that you're going to have peppers that are gonna grow and ripen um, in time for you to make Tabasco sauce before the frost comes and uh, really destroys your plants. Well, I got 
<laughs> Quite a few peppers on this first batch. They look pretty awesome. I would say probably six or eight cups worth. Just look at how gorgeous they are. Golly. Oh, I can't wait to make some great Tabasco sauce with these. But we're not done yet. We've got more things to pick. I also brought out with me some scissors because we're gonna make that spicy pepper vinegar sauce that so many people like, and we need the green or the, really the yellow peppers. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna snip off quite a few of these yellow Tabasco peppers right above the cap of you know the stem area so that we don't really have any of the stem in there you can see what that looks like so we're going to cut those peppers with no stem just right above the cap there Well, I think we have all the peppers we need for the Tabasco and the pepper vinegar. So we're gonna take these inside the house. So tomorrow morning after chores, we'll meet back in the kitchen. We'll make some amazing Tabasco sauce and pepper vinegar. Okay, it is officially Tabasco day. We're gonna be working on three different things today. We're gonna to be making a traditional Tabasco sauce, a fermented, Tabasco sauce, and then that Louisiana Tabasco pepper vinegar that you find on the table at your favorite restaurants, we're gonna be making that. Now, I do have all of these gorgeous Tabasco peppers in from the garden, all the red ones, all the yellowish green ones, and these are what we're gonna be using today. After you see all three of these recipes, you're gonna wonder why you have not made this before, and next year you're gonna be growing your own Tabasco peppers so that you can make these awesome recipes because you're never gonna to wanna to buy it from the grocery store again. Now we're gonna get started. I do wanna tell you that today was supposed to be super rainy, but it ended up not being rainy at all, but it is super windy. So I'm very glad that I got all of these uh, peppers harvested yesterday so we didn't have to deal with the wind out there in the garden. Okay, these are super simple. You're gonna wonder why you haven't been making these all along, so let's get started. Okay, we are gonna be starting on the traditional recipe first, and what we need to do is weigh out some of these gorgeous red Tabasco peppers. Now, I'm just using a pretty simple, relatively inexpensive uh, scale here from Walmart. It's the biggest loser scale, and we are gonna be measuring out five ounces of these red Tabasco peppers. Looks good. Next up, we need to measure out some vinegar. I am using white wine vinegar. It's not a super expensive kind, just the kind that you can get from Walmart. Um, you can use white vinegar as well, but I think that the white wine vinegar gives such a nice flavor. So we're just going to measure out one cup or eight ounces of white wine vinegar. Okay, now we're just gonna pour these peppers into a small sauce pot and we're just gonna pour over the vinegar. I'm gonna put this on the stove top. Aren't those just the most gorgeous color? Okay, we're gonna turn the heat on. Okay, we don't necessarily need to stir these the whole time. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this come up to a boil. As soon as it's at a boil, we're gonna turn it down to the lowest setting, put a, a cover on it and let it simmer for 15 minutes. Well, these have finished simmering, so I'm just gonna move them off of the heat. We're gonna let these cool down a little bit before we go forward into making the sauce itself. While it is cooling, let's get ready to start the fermented Tabasco sauce recipe. This part is gonna start off very similarly to what we did before. We're going to measure out five ounces of Tabasco peppers. And 
we're gonna put them into just a wide mouth pint sized jar. About that much. Okay, now we need to make the brine. Brine is basically salt water. I'm gonna be creating a brine with two cups of water and one tablespoon of salt. Now, this water is non-chlorinated water and that is very important. And I am using pink Himalayan salt. It's not important that you use pink Himalayan salt, but I choose this because it's less processed and it has a lot of the natural minerals that salt normally has in it before they process it all and take it out. Okay, so one tablespoon of pink Himalayan salt. I'm gonna mix that up until it dissolves. The brine from the pink Himalayan salt, you can see it stays pink. And it doesn't quite get as clear as some of the other more processed salts because a lot of those minerals just stay inside of there. So now that that is dissolved, I'm just gonna pour this brine into the jar of peppers until it's just above the peppers. Oh, they're rising up, so that's good enough for now. We're fermenting these peppers, so we need to have those peppers stay down in the brine. They can't float up to the top or they'll get moldy. I'm gonna add just a little bit more of that brine, and then I'm gonna add a weight on top to make sure that the peppers stay down in the brine. Now, there are a couple different types of glass weights that you can get. These that are flat and smooth on the top, or these that have a little handle. See, like that. And I prefer these just because they're easier to get on and off. So I'm gonna put that down on top of the peppers to hold them down. There you go. Now we need some kind of top on here and you can just put a standard top on here, but this is gonna create um, bubbles and it's gonna need to be burped um, every couple days so it doesn't explode. There are a couple options that I like so that I don't have to unscrew it every couple days and burp it. There is a company called Mason Tops that uses these kind of rubber um, tops that have um, kind of an X slit in the top right there. And that lets the air out and no air or bacteria inside of there. They work with a standard canning um, rim just like that or ring and you put it on top like that, screw it down and that's all you need to do, no burping necessary. These work very well. But my preference these days are lids like this. You would see them um, a lot in like, you know, if you're making wine and things like that. This has a top that comes on and off and a piece inside of here. You put a little bit of water down there, that piece in there, and it creates really like a one-way valve where air can get out, bloop, bloop, bloop through the water, but it can't get back down in there. I'm gonna put some water in there. These days I'm preferring these lids because I just really feel like there's no opportunity for um, contamination down in there. It just goes on the top just like that. Set it on your counter, let it do its thing, and every once in a while you'll see the bubbles go bloop, bloop, bloop. After two weeks, it's done. So getting the peppers fermented is really just as easy as that. Put them in a jar, fill them up with salt water, and put a top on there so that the gas can escape. Now, like I said, you'll want this to sit on your countertop at least a week, definitely two weeks is gonna be better. And really, the longer you have it on your countertop, the more kind of subtle and subdued the flavors are gonna be. And uh, it might just not have as much of a bite. I have found that the spiciness does go down a little bit when you ferment, but not a whole lot. And it's definitely not gonna go away entirely. A lot of people really like the flavor of fermented foods. Some people really don't. So try both ways and see which one you like the best. Okay, let's put this on the counter and go back to the cooling Tabasco peppers so we can blend those up and get them into some amazing sauce. Okay, we've got our peppers in here. They're still a little steamy, but not as hot as before. Okay, so we are going to carefully just pour these into a blender 
any old blender will do. This blender I'm using is a Ninja. I just got it from Walmart, it's nothing special. In the past, you may have seen me use a different kind of blender called a Vitamix, and that would work well in this situation also. The difference between a Vitamix and this type of a blender is that this blender is gonna leave behind most of the seeds and some of the skin, whereas a Vitamix would blend those all up so that it's like complete liquid. It would include and incorporate those seeds and skin into your Tabasco sauce, and it's really just a preference which one you would like. Today, I decided to use the blender uh, because I think that more of you will have just a standard blender than a Vitamix, and I just want this to apply to everybody. But if you do have a Vitamix, give it a try. Maybe you'll like it. The end product will be thicker than this end product. Okay, let's put this on and get it blending up. We are gonna pour this through just a, a sieve here. And uh, to help this through, I'm just going to kind of stir this around and scrape my spatula along the bottom of the sieve. It really helps push that sauce through there. You can see that coming down out of there. What we are left with is this amazing sauce. Well, our Tabasco sauce is pretty much finished. The thing is, right now it's really thick. It's thicker than Tabasco sauce would be that you would buy at the grocery store. And it's thicker than I can put in our little Tabasco jar. So I'm just gonna thin it a tiny little bit so that it is just kind of more pourable or drippable out of this um, container here, out of this jar. So I'm gonna add and thin it out with a little bit of the white wine vinegar that we use to make this. This is not an exact science. If you like it thick like this, just use it as it is. Thin it to whatever you would like. So I'm just gonna add a couple tablespoons, mix it around, see what it looks like, and see if I think I can pour it into my jar. Now, at some point in recent history, I did have a teeny tiny funnel, but it has disappeared. So I am going to try my very, very best to pour this Tabasco sauce into this jar. It may make a terrible mess. Well, it looks like my hands were steady enough to fill up this little jar and I have some extra. I probably have enough to fill at least half, maybe another full jar. I'll have to hunt around to see if I can find another one. So that is the traditional Tabasco sauce. So what about the Tabasco sauce with the fermented peppers? Well, it's pretty much just the same thing. You'll use all of the peppers and you can either use one cup of vinegar or you can substitute some of the vinegar for some of the brine that's left over so you'll have maybe 50% vinegar, 50% brine. Blend it up, strain it, and put it in a jar just like this. Now if you don't boil it like we did before there will still be some of the fermentation action um, going on so if you don't want to uh, destroy some of those good beneficial bacteria and stuff from the fermenting process you'll want to number one keep it in the refrigerator because that will slow the fermentation process but also you'll want to burp it every once in a while to make sure it doesn't explode in your refrigerator but otherwise 
otherwise the same process for the fermented peppers after they've been in here for at least a week or two, maybe more. Now both the traditional Tabasco sauce and the fermented Tabasco sauce can stay in the refrigerator for a long, long time. It could probably stay on the counter too, but I just prefer it in the refrigerator. I don't know how many months, but a long, long time in the refrigerator. Just look for mold. If it has mold on it, throw it away. So what if you have made a giant batch of Tabasco sauce, like cups and cups and cups of it? Can you can it? Yes, you can can it. In fact, several years ago when I first planted Tabasco peppers, I made lots and lots of Tabasco sauce. I think I ended up canning 10 or 12 um, half pints or like jelly jars worth of Tabasco sauce, which is why I haven't had to make it since then. So when you're canning it, you can use a standard water bath canning method, fill your jars up to a half inch above the rim of the jar and process that in a water bath canner for 10 minutes. Then you have it probably for years. So we've done the traditional Tabasco sauce and the fermented Tabasco sauce. There's one last thing that I promised you we were gonna do, and that is that Louisiana Tabasco pepper vinegar. Also, very simple. Now remember out in the garden, we picked some of these greenish, yellow, not quite ripe Tabasco peppers, and we're gonna turn that into that amazing, uh, hot, spicy vinegar that you find in some of the restaurants on the table. It really is just as easy as you would think. How would you make that? Basically, we're gonna put these peppers in a fun jar or a fun bottle like this and fill it up with vinegar. One little trick that I'm gonna do with some of these peppers so that we can get as much of the pepper flavor into the vinegar is I am gonna take a fork and I'm gonna poke holes in each one of these peppers. That way the vinegar can really infuse with that greenish, yellowish Tabasco pepper flavor and it will be ready to use even that much faster. It's really just as easy as filling kind of a decorative jar with these peppers and filling them with vinegar. Now that it's all filled up with peppers, we just need to add white vinegar. Now this pepper vinegar is gonna take quite a while to get nice and spicy. I would probably wait about a month, maybe six weeks. But you can try it in between and see if it's getting hot enough. But the longer you leave it in here, the better it's gonna be. Now, while you're using it, just leave the peppers right in there. You can just pour a little bit as you need it. And I would say that you could at least refill this one time with vinegar and get just as much flavor out of it the second round. Now, this can also be stored you know, on the counter, but I recommend once you get down into the peppers, you might wanna stick it in their fridge just to make sure that no molding happens. You guys are gonna love this hot pepper vinegar. Well guys, that was easy enough to do three awesome spicy pepper sauces. Now I wanna remind you that Tabasco seeds can be found from Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company. The year of plenty tops that I'm preferring this year, uh, you can find out more about those in our Amazon shop. Plus these mason top kind of rubber ones are also uh, in our Amazon shop if you wanna take a look at that. I hope if you don't have Tabasco peppers in the garden this year, you consider planting them next year because they are fun to grow and they make amazing sauce. You guys, if you're enjoying videos like this, make sure that you hit the subscribe button below. Also, if you know somebody who could benefit from knowing any of these Tabasco recipes, make sure you share it with them on your social media. We would very much appreciate it. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless.